Hi everyone, it's Kasia from Tarot Map, and this is my June favorites video. Um, you probably noticed that I don't really record so often these days, and um, I shouldn't probably say these days, but yeah, in May and April I was really busy working, and right now I'm a little bit um, freer, so I have a bit more time to play. And I thought I'm going to just come up and um, yeah, show you a few things that I enjoyed doing in June. Um, so let's start with my wands. So this is the first time, maybe this year, um, that I actually made some ones and um, yeah, I just wanted to show you the three that I finished and I still have a few more to go. Um, I was so excited that I was able to, you know, to, to be able to make them because I only make them when I feel I can make them. And my husband said this guy looks like, you know, a, a, a person in a coat, in a long coat. The crystal is really cool and yeah, I just, I think they really cool one. So this one comes with citrine, like natural citrine. And I also added like this little, this tiny little bit of um, watermelon tourmaline. You can't really see, but there's a little pink dot and a green. And it's like a solar and lunar one in one. So these three are going to accompany us while we're talking about decks of June and other favorites. I think I want to start with my um, with my uh, inner child cards that I'm starting creating, and this is from the Deep Play uh, Divination course by Melissa Lucia. So this is like a year long course, but we're catching up every few months and doing all sorts of different crazy divination or divinationary stuff. And um, last time we caught up, we were working with Inner Child and Melissa was um, guiding us to use our non-dominant hand. And I advise you to, you know, like to do it. Use your non-dominant hand to create things. So we, uh, she uh, like urged us to make and this wonderful deck for ourselves, which uh, can be called like inner child cards. She sends all these amazing materials for you to play with. So she printed this all out for us. Um, like, you know, your own oracle cards that you can like either glue on or uh, draw on. And I may wake up every morning and I kind of tune in, I do a short meditation and then I ask my inner child, how do you feel today? So um, Melissa also sends all this amazing, cool stuff in the course, you know. So if you want to join this course next year, I, I think it's really worth it. It's really fun. So this was my first card and I called it Wombi Dance. And it was when Mars went into Aries, so I just added this. It was all drawn, except for the Mars and Aries, because I forgot and I wrote it with the right hand. But everything else was done with the left hand. So this is my wombi inner child dancing and i found this quotation in one of melissa's stickers which said i'm just waiting to see if my coffee chooses to use its powers for good or evil today and a little rule i thought like it suits so you create you know your own kind of um connection right and these cards mean something very personal for you so the next one uh, next day that was uh, bend and hide away my lonely heart um, and it was 29 so I just add this because everything can mean something um, I also found the sticker of 115 maybe at some point it will mean something to me and then uh, the one today was there's fire in my belly <laughs> and this is my inner child jumping into a deep well um, inspection requested I found this sticker and still when you actually go in maybe stills that fire in the belly but it reminded me a little bit of temperance card so these three for now I have these three um, that I've done and each has a different background I mean the back I 
I really love the process. It's a really cool process. Um, so I also wanted to show you those runes that I found. I made those runes, it says rune in Polish. I made them, oh my god, 2011. And then I went today through all my back, old bags with things. And I don't know where I took the curry shells from. Um, and I wrote runes on them because I couldn't find stones. And I think second hand I bought somewhere the curry shells. Um, and here in Polish even I was making, I was learning what the runes are. So yeah, well, it's, I just was curious that I found it right now. So it wasn't really maybe my June favorite, but I just wanted to share that something like this uh, uh, emerged from nowhere. I haven't searched for it, it just came up. And then um, I posted about this on my Instagram. You know, I'm like collecting all these different um, Mary um, paintings and things. And recently, for the last three days, Mary was just, I think, around because I keep finding all this <laughs> weird stuff, like old paintings or drawings. So my neighbor, uh, she gifted me um, this, like, you know, Holy Family. A painting but I love the frame it's a really old frame and the old reproduction it looks like from maybe well I don't know if it's from the newspaper or not it's really old and I just love when they old and not perfect and then the other one was that um, Mary of Gidle I went actually to the sanctuary I visited her when um, I went to Częstochowa to the Black Madonna of Częstochowa and she's just a tiny little figurine and um, they created this huge church for her so it's really funny so if we move to the decks actually I want to mention one book as well because I got this book from my friend Melanie thanks babe and um, it's by Martin Shaw it's Courting the Wild Twin and it's basically um, a book of literary activism an antidote to the shallow thinking that typifies our age it challenges us to wake up, to revive our condition of wondering and examine our broken relationship with the world. We need to think boldly, widely and in new ways about ourselves as individuals and as a collective to confront modern challenges with purpose, courage and creativity. After all, stories are our secret, secret weapons and they might just save us. And Melanie sent this to me. I keep putting like stickers on it because I just it's written in such a beautiful way and um, that I keep like, you know, marking these things. And um, where is this cool? Oh, I love that. He says, um, bad storytellers make spells. Great storytellers break them. <laughs> And there's a lot of cool things of how to connect with beauty and um, this tempering. That's why uh, Mel sent it to me because she knows that, you know, temperance is one of those cards that I constantly, like, I'm learning about. And I also wrote it today on Instagram. I see tempering as a more useful word than initiation in many cases. It brings up fewer associations with particular age ranges and a more circular, more regular encounter. And one that makes us hum like the taut string on a lyre. Tempering, if we are really paying attention, will be a constant our whole life. And yeah, so just learning about temperance, tempering, where it comes from. A really cool book. Um, he describes two fairy tales. Um, or, or is it two fairy Cutting the wild twin. Um, two ancient fairy tales. I'm just reading about the the first one. So um, yeah, this this is really a cool book. And okay, on to the decks. So what decks were my favorites in June? So first of all, I have to mention the um, embroidered forest tarot because it's the cutest, sweetest deck ever. I've done reviews, a uh, review of this deck. There's an interview with uh, Alicia as well, but it's just sweet. So I have used it a lot for myself. I've used it um, for just general day-to-day -day readings, you know, but also I think it really suits, well, for me, it suits really well uh, to use it for um, just like creative exploration and um, I, maybe because it's a medium that was created in such a 
um, original way I don't know it just it helps me and it feels very feminine through this silver also like this moon kind of I love this deck it, it's quiet whenever I use it I feel like I quieten down it's really beautiful so this is the um, embroidered forest tarot another one that I really loved using was the Morgan Greer tarot and since my intuitive tarot workshop that I have um done uh, this month I wanted to do it before Mercury went retrograde I've used this deck for some examples you know at the course and I just felt like wow how come I've never used this deck you know for uh, for a long time not never but I haven't used it for a long time and I just find it really cool. It's one of those decks that has a lot of kind of close-ups. So each of the archetypes, as you see, is like, it's very close up. There's not much space. So it's quite a bold deck. It's actually like kind of shouts sometimes, you know, in the readings and the colors. I've got this old kind of vintage version from 70s, but yeah, it, I really enjoyed it. And if you are interested in my... Um, intuitive tarot course i'm going to put it on my website today and uh, you can purchase it they recorded um, two zoom sessions that i recorded i also edit a little bit um, the session so you don't you know i skip the um, meditations or per certain part of the of the class that might be not so interesting when you rewatch it you know and you haven't been taken part live uh, so it will be a little bit shortened for your comfort and for, uh, you know, the comfort of viewing. But you definitely can learn from that and you can do exercises, you know, at your own pace. So if you're interested, I'm going to link um, that workshop below in my description box. Another one that I kind of really fell in love with was this Darkness of Light Tarot. I was... Um, it was a gift from my friend Vicky and I just still think the artwork in this deck is amazing. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful art. It's, I mean, people do speak about it, right? It's right there with Smith, but it's just, just the pinky, pink in the wands. So it's a little bit color coordinated, but not really, you know, hugely. But you get this browns kind of for the pentacles and um, the kind of grayish for the swords and this greenish blue for, for the cups. And it, I don't know, it just has the impact, this art. It's kind of dark, yeah, but it's the darkness of light. I, I'm, I'm really, like, you know, if you pull a few, few cuts together, they really make... I don't know, they're just kind of deep and because of the artwork and how it's painted, like this kind of layers of paint, it's it's beautiful. I don't know if this is, um, I don't even know what edition that is. Um, it says 718, so is this the 2018 or I don't know. But... It is a beautiful deck. Yeah, it's 2018. And designed by Tony Di Maura. I really like it. I really like it. And then another of my favorites this month was Wild Messengers deck. Oh my god, this deck, I swear. Um I have a lot I had a lot of um client readings and that's when I you know often when you use decks for client readings you start to getting to know the decks right so I started using this deck just like you know one card pull like what animal uh, what's you know what's the advice from the animal uh, of choice here and to be honest it was so spot on that I couldn't believe my eyes like I usually do astrology and tarot and oracles in my readings and whenever I pull this card it was like summing up the whole reading or was just summing up or confirming what I was just talking about it was incredible and the book for this deck is amazing and um, I always read the book because she has a little bit different associations to what I usually use for the animals. So I use my own, but also I love using hers because it just goes like 
goes with this particular deck. It's amazing. It's a really cool, cool deck, and I love playing with it this um, this month. Not such a long time ago, I received this Badass Tarot by Harley Spencer, and I'm just like exploring it and seeing how it works for me. It's just a funny deck. I think it's really geared for younger, you know, people with sense of humor, and I'm really enjoying working with it. And um, it's it's modern. It's handmade so it's fully like kind of laminated a little bit Carol Helter style and um, she added added cards that are you know kind of important right now wash your fucking hands so if you don't like you know swear words or uh, taking you know a piece of what's happening around you then it's not a deck for you but um yeah, I really, I, I, I like using it. I like working with it. And I think it will be a cool deck to work uh, with for some younger teenage people, you know, or like young 20s or something. I think for the readings, they, they would reconnect with this deck for sure. So um, this is definitely fun, fun, fun to use, you know, and I feel a bit like I need an uplift then this deck comes to hand. And there's two more decks. So one is the... I used a lot of oracles, but somehow I didn't I didn't pull them up. So I connected, uh, combined my two Santos and Signs decks. So now I have one humongous uh, big mama of, of a deck. Um, so that's Santos and Signs by Melissa Lucia. You have um, Signs cards and Santos Signs. So basically that's very... Um, Kind of if you like this type of themes, but um, you know, it's an interesting deck, it's modern. Melissa is an amazing artist, she's so creative, um, and um, yeah, I kind of you know, you learn to read really intuitively with decks like this because it's basically like reading photographs, right? Or, um, but yeah, if you're annoyed by Jesus and saints and stuff, then probably it's not the deck for you. Uh, it also comes with, oh, this is such a great card. It also comes with these um, signs, right? So you have those little words and then you work together. You can pull these words and you can pull, um, so you can pull, for example, I have videos on this deck, so you can take a look if you're interested. Um, but rest, breathe and rejoice. Oh, that's a nice message, right? We like that. Rest, breathe and rejoice. That's exactly what I planned for for the second part of this month. So if you want to then add some of the of the of the cards. So it's it's strange, right? Because for the rest you get this, I don't know, it looked like a poo. <laughs> But it's like, it's a stick that looks like a bone. It's a little angel, but it's kind of broken. So maybe, you know, it like to me right now, it just felt like deep rest, like go to the bare bones, you know, like lose the wings for a while. Breathe and we have this, you know, cleanse and um, do some washing, clean around you, breathe, so make space and rejoice. And it's this kind of inner child, but... I'm drawn right now to this turquoise um, color in in this picture, which reminds me a little bit of the expression. So make sure that you use language that also kind of brings joy and express yourself. Maybe maybe your inner child, like you know the inner child cards or something that makes brings you joy. So that's how you can play with this deck. And I also was surprised sometimes I use it in my astrology readings for people and. Um, I just, you know, like I or for Chiron reading and I just pull them to see uh, what the pictures would show. And sometimes it's pretty amazing that even pictures like this, which seem to be a little bit unrelated to the regular life, can be so kind of spot on. And the last two decks I want to show, actually the one which was my favorite of June, and it's the El Goliath Tarot deck. I have the first edition uh, right now. And oh, this deck, you know, what can you say about this deck? I still love it. I always loved it. I will always probably love it. It's an awesome deck. So I was playing with it. I mixed the oracles with this deck because there's a part of oracle cards here that you can separate if you want, but I'm just using it all together. And I used it um, in quite a few personal readings um, this month. 
um, there was eclipses going on, so there was a lot of readings that I did for myself. But so El Goliath has a second edition out right now, and the cards are smaller, not so laminated. It looks amazing. It's coming, I think, so I will show you when it gets here. And the Dream that Shamanic Tarot, it's just arrived, and I'm going to make a review and film the review for you of this deck because it's another deck that it's fairly i mean it's already been out you know since i think 2000 and when 2012 or 2016 sorry so 2016 so it's not like last year um, and the cards are quite big but they've quite flexible so for me, I don't mind shuffling big decks. I don't have issues with it. I know that a lot of people who have small hands, you know, can't use those big decks. But this is a great deck. You can always go this way and meditate because it's a very abstract deck. And that's what I loved about it. I, like, when I saw it, I felt like, oh my God, like that's where I am at, at right now. Like I want to read those decks, not only, but you know, I want to read those decks. I want to challenge myself. Um, it's, it's very unusual. It's original art by Sue Kovacs. And I also have an interview with her and you can take a look because she takes me on the process and you can learn also how you can use any card to go on in, into the card, you know, and explore what this card is telling you at this particular moment of time. So yeah, this deck is really incredible. How beautiful is this card? The wind horse. Oh, look at those colors. Sweet. So it has um, thorough structure and you have also, you know, the, so for example, Ten of Wind would be Ten of Swords. So you also get like keywords like golden shores of new light begin to awaken your thoughts. The nightmare is over, pain and suffering transition into hope. So she took the Ten of Swords from this, you know, um, perspective of finishing of suffering justice is balance using wise judgment to discern what is best the law legal matters a fair decision and so on so you get oh, some of the colors so you get um a lot of help even if you find this too abstract but at some point i noticed that i don't really look at the writing much maybe later on after i really connect to the card and you also get a little booklet with it and so you don't have to fear that, you know, like, oh, I won't, I don't know what to do with it. If you know Tara, you will know what to do with it. And then you also can stretch your own um, kind of boundaries and start to read Tara a little bit more intuitively. And so this comes with this cool box also. So that's the shamanic, uh, I mean, dream dust shamanic Tara. And that's it. I think that's what I wanted to share. So thank you for watching. Happy July that's coming. We have the last eclipse on the 5th of July and then we're moving out of the eclipse season. So we're still in it. I specifically took a little more time off. I just want to rest. And you know guys that I went away. I just want to share this story with you, the last story. Um, and so from this deep divination, deep play divination, we pulled at the beginning of January cards for each month and um, we haven't looked at them. You just pull them without seeing what you're pulling and you put stickers on them without seeing where you're putting the stickers. And I forgot to pull my cards for June um, in the beginning of June, right? And when I went to my, on my recent trip, like short trip here in Poland, I went to visit my grandmother. I was I'd never met her in my life, so I just found her grave and the grave of my grandfather. And it was the first time I went to this area, you know, where I'm from. And when I pulled these cards after I came back, this card came up and it said grandmother of love, granddaughter of life. And I put those stickers, the journeys, the destination, fell in love with her at once, traveling companion, which is close to the grandmother. And I swear I had such goosebumps because if I pulled this card in the beginning of June, before I went on the trip, you know, I would just go, oh, okay, you know, nice card. <laughs> but after I came back, back from the, you know, visiting the grave of my grandmother, like reconnecting with her, and suddenly, you know, I'm pulling this card. It was like, boom, such a big one. So I love this card. It's beautiful. 
so yeah so that's the story that's the magic that happened <laughs> to me so thanks everyone i hope you enjoyed it if you make the inner child cards show us i would love to see share your creativity with me and um tomorrow i'm going to post uh i think 12 uh, a.m uh ct time um, the interview with Queen Osset is going up. So if you are interested in our chat, uh, Queen Osset um, is from our community. We talk about race, we talk about um, Black Lives Matter, we talk about allyship, we talk about friendship, we talk about similarities and differences. Uh, it's an hour and 20 minute long chat, but um, yeah, we couldn't stop ourselves. So uh, please take a look at this interview and yeah, leave a comment. How do you feel about the state of the world right now? What do you think we can do? How we can create a more fair and just world for everybody involved, for all people? And uh, how can we use the privilege that some of us have? to you know to use to use this privilege in a conscious way um, because used unconsciously it can cost people lives as proven by the recent events so um thank you for watching i hope you enjoy the interview with queen osset um it's coming up on wednesday and i'll speak to you soon and share your favorites bye